cared for the earth since the beginning of time. We are the stewards, the caretakers, the keepers of the land, air, and water. We are the indigenous people of the world, and we are using our traditional ways and science to protect Mother Earth. I'm Steve Sweetel, and welcome to Down to Earth. Today on our show, we're heading to the University of Victoria, where we'll visit the First People's House. Now, this is a green building that was designed by Alfred Waugh. We'll also visit a forestry rally in Victoria and meet Eli Enns. Now, he's a leader in sustainable community planning. And later on the show, we'll meet Pam Gross and learn how her Inuit community is responding to climate change. Indigenous students who leave their communities to attend post-secondary programs often report feelings of isolation on campus. Many universities across Canada have established centres for Indigenous students where they can take part in traditional ceremonies, study and feel part of the Indigenous community on campus. At the University of Victoria, the First People's House is more than a place for Indigenous students to gather and share their cultures. It is a model building that meets the highest standards for green design. This is the first people's house. I'd like to take you on a little walk through it. It's a project we're just finishing. This building is an important building for the, the Aboriginal students and staff on the campus because it represents a home away from home for students. It provides counselling and it also helps keep the retention of students in university. There is a, a need to make sure that there is an inspiration, uh, a sense of home so that they complete education and go on to become leaders of their people. Alfred Waugh is an indigenous architect from northern Canada who has built his reputation on creating sustainable buildings that are based on traditional architecture. This building here, the design of it integrates ideas of cultural sensitivity, respecting the Salish people, the coastal Salish, and also ideas of sustainability. The elders on this project said, okay, well, this building represents um, youth going into the 21st century, entering the 21st century, getting a, a modern education, so that the house posts entering in this building from the campus should be more modern. I imagine just, just the visual impact alone, and you're in the middle of the campus and you get to see these traditional structures must have an impact. I think that's part of the in intention of the building uh, in, the, in the sense that it's inspired from um, the Coast Salish Longhouse, which was a post and beam structure clad in cedar planks. At the University of Victoria, Waugh based the first people's house on traditional Coast Salish architecture and incorporated a big house for ceremonies and events. This building itself is a modern building because it's not used like the traditional longhouse. It has classrooms, it has a ceremonial hall, it has offices, an elder's room. It addresses the climate. Um, say they, we have a planted roof over here, uh, which is homage to the interior Salish people. So the two main principles here are cultural sensitivity and ecological sustainability. If we are the First Nations people and we say we have the close relationship with the land, well, we should walk the talk. Our buildings should be representative of a sustainable approach to building. This building, this is the main entrance lobby and it's also um, behind this wall is, is the ceremonial room. It is being used right now for drumming practice. And anyway, Richard Harry did these doors, and Charles Elliott did the, the traditional house posts into this space. As you can see, this building is clad with cedar planks from inside to outside the building, again, making reference to the Salish longhouse. Um, the structure, you can see these, all these uh, posts uh, are made Douglas fir glue lamb. 
And again, what we try to do is we want to respect the culture, but we also want to say wood is a precious material. So we're efficient, and then from an environmental po point of view, it's an efficient use of material. We're coming down to the classroom area, and one of the um, main elements of the sustainable strategy in this building is uh, natural ventilation, uh, or displacement ventilation. You can see above the doors into the classrooms all these slots here. Um, there's a, there's a, an acoustic baffle in here, but the idea of this is we bring natural air from either the operable windows in the classroom um, or um, a damper which conditions the air so that you can get natural ventilation even in the winter. You know, the hot air rises and it ventilates into this hallway and then that hallway is returned back to the mechanical room and to a heat return system. So our, talking about uh, water, we wanted to address that importance to, to the, the Coast Salish people. And so what we have done is we've created this pond. This pond will hold water in all year round, but there's an overflow to another pond. We collect all the water from the roof and it drains into the pond. And we slow the rate in which it goes into the stormwater system so we don't, uh, uh, we mitigate how much it goes and a lot of it disappears in the landscape. So that's another sustainable strategy. Otherwise it would have been uh, running straight to the ocean? Well, wherever this, the storm water goes. And how the, does the water get from the roof into the Well, pond? here it's not uh, painted yet, but we have a waterfall scupper, in which w what we do in, 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 in the essence of celebrating uh, water is, is when it rains here, we have a sheet of water that comes off the building into the pond. And then over here, um, we have the, the round earth wall. And again, this is a reference to the interior Salish that used pit houses. They called them ishkins or coolies. So this building has a, has a planted roof on it with uh, wildflowers. And uh, the, the wall itself is made out of a mixture of, of soil and concrete. And it's tamped down in, in 18 inch lifts. And uh, so you get this nice... Uh, um, so those designs are naturally made from the compression. Yeah, it's, it's not a painted yeah, designer. Yeah, no, it's 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 it's. Uh, and those are the natural colors of the element. Yeah, the That's natural beautiful. color, yes. And then all the planting, as you can see, it hasn't grown in yet, but it, it's all indigenous plants from this area or the Vancouver Island area. This, this will almost emulate an old wetland that would have been here. Yeah, that's the idea. What I want to do now is take you to the the ceremonial. A room in the building, and I'll show you around in that right room. On. Okay. I look forward to seeing yeah, okay. That. We're walking into the the ceremonial hall, which is the cultural heart of the building. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's a, a room that uh, we really wanted to capture the soul of of the Coast Salish people, yet do it in a, in a modern way. You can see the bleachers which were traditionally in um, the longhouse. We have slots in here so we're, we're continuing this idea of natural ventilation. Well you have absolutely succeeded in creating uh, that atmosphere. It feels, it feels like a big house. It's a 2,000 square foot room so what we're trying to do is, 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 is give the, the, the idea of grandeur and sacredness. Um, at the the project also required a fire pit. We wanted to avoid having a, a hood over the fireplace. This uh, the university required it to be natural gas, but the, the supply and the exhaust for the fireplace goes under the floor outside. So you, you don't obstruct um, the room by having a, a hood over it. You still have the, the sacred element of what the fire symbolizes. I think this space addresses the need of, of, of the student body in the sense that it is a direct link to uh, the cultural past. Mm -hmm.